Creative Katie, Karen Virgil here, and welcome to Index Card of Day 2017. This is card 40. I am on prompt, but I think I have the wrong day. The prompt is Roots, and mine is called Storms Make Trees Take Deeper Roots. Links to any special supplies can be found in the description box below. Don't forget to hit the subscribe button and select the option of being notified of upcoming videos. So I'm starting with a gessoed card as per usual and I found a couple quotes wings to show you what you can become roots to remind you where you're from so I'm thinking about that one that was in my stash and then I had this one storms make trees take deeper roots I'm thinking I'm going with the second one now I have this stencil from the crafters workshop and it's called leaves and it has all these wonderful Leaves. And I'll put a link to a couple videos where I've used these leaves to create pages. But I think what I'm going to do is use one as a tree and one as the roots. So I grab all sorts of colors to just put color down here. And I was going to do some stamping and other things. I just absolutely loved how the green and the blue mingled they made this dark stormy kind of blue and I just thought that was enough of the background so all the other colors just end up sitting there and you know I was amazed at how when you start a project you may have an inkling of an idea but then it takes its own path and I sometimes feel like I'm just being taken along for the ride. So when you're putting acrylic paint on, once you have it, once it starts getting a little tacky, you need to stop and let it dry. If you want to layer more, especially ones that are a little bit more translucent, um, you need to dry it and mix it. So that's what I'm doing and I'm just having fun. You know, there's nothing more fun than just being painting with your fingers. And that's one of the reasons I love teaching kindergarten and grade one so much. I taught art every day to develop listening skills and, and other skills, but I got to create every day and play with color. So I'm really liking the kind of stormy sky that I've created here. And it kind of really goes with that second quote. So I know at this point in time that I'm definitely going with that one. I kind of want it to get that kind of model look, so I'm kind of streaking it on top of each other. Just playing with the texture that the paint has and liking it when, you know, stopping when I like it. There is no right or wrong. You just go. So after a quick wipe up and clean up, and drying of the acrylic paint, I get out the stencil. So I decided I'm gonna use the one with the, the sun, just because. It took me quite a while to decide. I think I could have done any of those, but I like the motif of the sun on there. Now, I was going to stencil through the scent, or with white paint. And then I stop and I decide that I want the tree to have some texture. So I grab instead my flexible modeling paste. It's going to be white, so if I want to keep it white, because that's what I'm thinking, I can leave it and it would be fine. But I can also paint it if should I decide to go another route. So I put that on and I'm quite happy with how it went on. Taking it off and I was like, duh, um, could you center it? So I scrape it off and wipe it off with the baby wipe. And I can do this because the background is acrylic and it's permanent. 
if this was distressed inks or the background was distressed crayons or intense blocks, I wouldn't have been able to do that as much without taking it back to square one. So this time paying attention to center, centering it, I put the flexible modding one paste on. There, that's a little bit better. So I clean the stencil and then I'm taking this, this stencil, this leaf, and to me that looks like roots, but I like the idea that the roots look like a heart as well. So after playing around with where I want it, because I, I want most of it to show on the card, and this card is just a little small, I'm using my Stabilo all pencil, my white one, but you can use a watercolor pencil, you could probably use a regular pencil, because what I'm going to do is paint the roots black, and what will be painted is what is being covered right now. I'm thinking that top one with this way I way I did the flexible modding place would look really nice on an, a sunset background with the sun. I may just do that again. Try that. Do, you do the same kind of thing with a different color scheme. So here we've used stencils two ways. We can use stencils in a multitude of ways. And I will be doing a technique tag video on various ways to use stencils. But if you, I guess this one will be a sneak peek. You can trace them or you can put modeling paste through them. So there are two ways. We've made that investment in the stencil. It's, we need to maximize its use. And I admit, I am looking at the stencil on the side to make sure I'm painting in the right space. For some reason, I just I really get kind of mixed up and turned around when I'm trying to figure out positive and negative with stencils. It's just something that I really have to concentrate on. Like what part is going to be stenciled? What do I want to cover? What's going to be the color of the background? So the white marks there, and I turned on the camera, but I forgot to turn on the hit the record button. I just took a baby wipe and I wiped off the Stabilo All Pencil. And I'm just using a liner brush and just touching it up a little bit, cleaning up the edges. And anytime I use the liner brush, I thin the paint to make it easier to move it around. So I'm edging with black and I just have acrylic paint on there that I, you know, I had some that and now I'm just edging the sentiment which I've played with off camera and decided how I'm going to cut it and place it.
And again, because this is acrylic paint, it will be permanent when dry. It's not going to smear. Sometimes when I've used distress inks, that will smear. So you have to be aware of that and be open to it, the possibility of it happening. So as I'm looking at this, I'm thinking, okay, what's next? What do I need to, to add here? So as I'm thinking, as I'm gluing down um, the sentiment, because I figure, you know what, I know I where that's going. Let's just put it in place before I lose it. I'm thinking about what comes next. I have to admit that I was quite happy being back to my vibrant acrylic colors um, after working with my Distress Oxides and getting that oxidized, muted kind of color. So I think about the idea of outlining the white with black and outlining the black with white, but then you see it, I grab the gold. So I'm outlining the roots part with gold. And I really like how that, the contrast with the black works. This is a Secura Jelly Roll Pan. I bought the metallic set and I love them. I, I've used them. I love how they write. Um, and when they get used up, I will replace them in my stash. I'm thinking about outlining the quote in gold. But instead, I grab my gold acrylic paint and I am going to paint the modeling paste with the gold. I think it seemed it was fitting because of the sun motif, the sun and the shining. It just seemed to work all together. And the sun comes out and shines after the storms. So I'm thinning down the gold paint. Now here's the thing that I've discovered with this Liquitex, oh, actually I think it's Artist Loft gold paint, with the gold. It is, it usually takes a couple coats at least if you want a nice solid gold color. It seems to be a fairly transparent, translucent color. So. Anytime I grab and I'm painting with the gold, I'm pretty much guaranteed, and I know it, to use a couple coats. So I've thinned down the paint and I'm using a small round brush. Now, when I dried the modeling paste, I deliberately heated it closer and longer. And it kind of bubbled up. It almost got a, a more of a 3D effect than what the flexible modeling paste would have given. And it has kind of that rounded edges. And the gold just shows that off. If you have Inca gold, you can rub that onto there. You, I, I could have used the jelly roll pan and, and colored it in. Um, but the gold, I really like it. It really brightened this page and set everything up together. This card took about 30 minutes from start to finish. So that's, that's pretty good. But there was no shading or floating that I needed to do. So in a lot of ways, it was more simplistic. There wasn't a lot of, of that kind of stuff. So here I go with the second layer.
and you can see the comparison of the ones that I've done two layers on and the ones that have a single layer. They're just not as gold yet. So I want to make sure I kind of get the edges a little bit, and I do come back afterwards and touch it up with a liner brush, but I didn't, you know, to doing that, I'm more likely to get gold on the background, and I didn't want to make a mess of that. So you got to know <laughs> when to stop. So there I'm thinking, oh, I want to get to those edges and whatever. And... Really liking that gold and, and the sun motif. Well, I have a little leftover gold, so you know that means splatter. So I water it down and grab my fan brush, and then I'm just going to do some splatters. It seems that there are lots of different ways that you can watch videos of different people use to get different ways of making splatters. Find the one that works for you and then stick to it. If that's a toothbrush, go with it. If that's a round brush and tapping it on your finger, then do it. If it's a fan brush, do that. So cleaning up, and, you know, I, I'm quite pleased with how this one turned out. Thank you so much for watching and for leaving comments. If you like this video and you want to see more, you know, leave a comment, share the video, um, give it a thumbs up. Here are some close-ups. Definitely try this color combination. It, it works really well, as you can see. Bye for now.